Sounds True presents Resurrecting Jesus, Embodying the Spirit of a Revolutionary Mystic with Adyashanti. And now session one, Encountering the Mystery. So how does a spiritual teacher with a Zen Buddhist background get interested in the Jesus story? Well, from the time I can remember, uh, being five, six, seven, as soon as I really started to hear about the Jesus story, watch some of the spiritual epics that were on TV and the movies at that time, the Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur, I think it was, and uh, movies like that, I was really fascinated with the Jesus story. I didn't grow up in a particularly religious family, not religious in the sense of going to church every Sunday and, and stuff like that. I, my parents, when we, were, when we were young, maybe eight or nine years old, they decided to take us to church for a while. And of course, I was put into Sunday school and the, my parents went off to what I called the big room um, to listen to the preacher. And it wasn't more than after two or three times of going to Sunday school, I just told my parents, you know, I just, I really don't want to go. I I wasn't interested in sort of, you know, they had us coloring pictures of Jesus in a book and doing artistic things and singing songs. And I was, I was always really interested in what happened in the big room, you know, the room where the preacher was and all the adults were. And, and I guess I was too young to go in there, but it wasn't too long before I told my parents I really didn't want to go to Sunday school. And And that was that. We stopped going. So the family wasn't uh, particularly religious in the conventional sense, but there was a lot of uh, religious, uh, spiritual conversation that went on in the family amongst my my parents, amongst my grandparents. I had two sets of grandparents that lived very close to me. I had aunts and uncles and cousins. And we, since we all live fairly close, we would all get together really often. And it was not unusual that when the adults got together, the conversation turned to various religious subjects or various spiritual subjects. Both of my grandparents were churchgoers. Um, one of my grandfathers was a real, a real serious, a real Christian is what I called him. He, uh, his friends called him the deacon because he spent so much time being the deacon in his church. And he was, a, he was a wonderful man. And when I say true Christian, I mean that in the best sense of the word. He, he embodied the Christian spirit of generosity and, and love in a way that, uh, that I've rarely seen even ever since then. And so I had, a real, I had a real influence. You know, I was influenced by these conversations. And I, I just found them so mysterious and so engaging. You know, I just talks about God and spirit and... And, and Jesus and parts about his life. And I would just sit there and listen really in a kind of awe. You know, not that I understood it all, but it sort of engendered in me a deep feeling of the, uh, of the mystery, of the mystery of life, of this, this sort of transcendent sort of presence that I could feel. Um, from the time I was very young, I would have various types of I guess you'd call them spiritual experiences now, of many, many types. And um, so when I would hear talk of religion or spirituality, um, I, there was a connection I was making between these, these experiences that I was having in childhood and um, what some of the adults were talking about. So as I said, even though it wasn't a really religious family, my, my, my really close personal family, um, but religion and spirituality were a part of life from as far back as I can remember. Fortunately, the discussion was always very open and you know more, more expansive. It wasn't dogmatic and nobody was trying to argue their point. It was more a kind of inquiry, um, really looking deeply at these things. And I loved being a part of it. And so I had some sort of strange actions that I used to do. One of them was uh, that I would spent many, many years of my life, actually. Anytime I was, had a piece of paper, I would doodle, and I would make this sort of cross sign and with a big circle around it. And I made no connection consciously to it with Christianity or, or the Jesus story. I was just obsessed with writing, doing this little doodle across with a circle on it. And I would do it 
You know, when I had a piece of paper in my hand, when I was at school, I would doodle on the sides of my, make crosses on the side of my paper. I, when I was a kid and I was in, ba- in the bathtub, we had these big sliding glass doors in front of the bath, and you'd get in there and you'd slide them shut so it'd keep all the sort of the heat and the steam in there, and the steam would steam up these glass doors, and I would sit there and doodle these crosses with circles around them for sometimes for a half an hour, you know, just mindlessly, not even knowing exactly why. But I think somehow they really connected back to the whole story of Jesus and the the spirituality that I felt and spiritual experiences I had as a kid. So it was strange to be in a family that wasn't overtly religious. We didn't go to church, but where religion and spirituality were so much a part of the discussion. I was also always a lover of Christmas. And I suppose, you know, Any kid that has Christmas is a lover of Christmas with all the presents and the tree and the lights and all that kind of stuff and the the TV shows that you watch that are made for kids. But for me, Christmas, it was a time for, you know, fun and celebration and and lights and presents and all that kind of stuff. I, I love that, all that. But I also, as far as I can remember back, Um, starting usually a couple of months before Christmas, so sometime in October, I would be sort of overcome by this, this, a certain kind of presence. And it was really more of a kind of a transcendent, but a beautiful sort of rich, um, heartful, intimate presence. It was, I associated it with the Jesus story, um, which is, of course, what Christmas is (laughs) really all about, supposed to be all about. But there was a a feeling of the sacred that would overcome me for, like I said, the the, the couple of months before Christmas, certainly into Christmas. And the closer we got to the Christmas, the more I'd have this sense of the sacred, of something really beautiful, profound, something with great meaning, and, and of course, a real sort of intimacy, a real heartfulness and this, this sense would just sort of overtake me. And it was, it was like literally every year living in a, in a state of grace for two or three months every year because it would continue after Christmas for maybe a month or so. So to, to have this every year to feel like I would spend two or three months living in a state of grace that was oriented around Christmas was, um, it was really, really profound to me. And, and it added a dimension to the whole Christmas celebration that wasn't just about what kids do and packages and lights and all the glitter of Christmas, but it was a real sense of of sacredness going along with that. And so Christmas and the Christian message has always resonated with me on a deep level. The story has always been intriguing to me. And uh, as I got older and I got into my teen years, I went to a partook of a communion at a mass. And I didn't know that, you know, if you weren't confirmed into the church, you weren't supposed to take communion. And I was kind of glad looking back that I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be doing this uh, because I just did it innocently. And I, and I went through the ceremony, this went through the ritual of, of taking the communion and the, and the drinking the wine and and I just found just going through this sort of silent ritual was extraordinarily profound. You know, I didn't expect it. I just sort of showed up because I was going with a, a family, not my own family, but another family was going. I said, sure, I'll, I'll go. We'll see what it's like. And it was very, very profound. Again, that kind of connected me in a, in a way with the story of Jesus again. And so there was many of these instances as I was growing up, the family conversations, which were sort of really, you know, intimate and and inquiry, and they were, they had a really lovely energy to them, to me as a kid, and and, uh, the religious epics that I saw, and and my, my grandparents, and especially my grandfather, all of these sort of went together to, you know, inform me in a conscious and I think in a lot of ways that weren't even conscious of of the sacredness of the Christian story. As I got late into my teens, 18, 19, 20, I really started to get interested in a deeper form of spirituality. 
I wasn't thinking of Christianity at the time. I just started to read some books. And I read a book about Buddhism, and in that book it had the word enlightenment. And when I read the word enlightenment, my, you know, I had a real, real big response to it. And I had to know what the meaning of that word was. And that changed. That changed my orientation. And um, I suppose you could say at that moment I became a spiritual seeker. I was searching for what, what that enlightenment was that was in that Zen book. And, and so I found a, a Zen teacher that actually happened to be only 15 minutes from where I grew up, which was amazing at the time because back then there were very few Zen centers or temples.